Hi, good uh, morning, Dr. Sridhar Kalyana Sundaram, consultant neonatologist. Welcome to my channel. And uh, today we have uh, with us a uh, pediatric gastroenterologist, Dr. Ajmal Kadar. He will be uh, briefing you on a very important topic for parents, which is infant constipation. So obviously constipation varies in its presentation and the extent to which it affects a child varies, but mostly it's a habit related or a behavior related issue and food habits, water intake play a big role as well. So uh, Dr. Ajmal is a pediatric gastroenterologist. We have had a session with him on milk allergy and reflux earlier. So he trained in India as well as in UK. He worked in Great Ormond Street and Royal Free as a consultant pediatric gastroenterologist. He worked in Singapore and then he moved to Dubai where he was at Al Jalila Hospital and now he's at uh, Dubai Hospital. Welcome Dr. Ajmal, thank you again. Thank you Sridhar, it's a pleasure to be on your channel. And uh, regarding constipation, can you please give us an overview of how you would uh, approach it and mainly focusing on parental advice? Okay. Uh, yes, constipation is, a, is an important and a very common problem and uh, very often uh, requires some kind of help from a primary care physician or even a pediatric gastroenterologist. So as with any disease or condition, there is always a spectrum from a very mild cases to more severe, which requires a lot of uh, investigation and medications. But a big majority don't need much of testing or some of them don't even need much of treatment. So the big bulk of constipation happens in toddlers and it is not only related to your diet or your intestine, it is often related to the behavior of the person also. So very often there is a triggering event. So that means there's been a child in the child, there's been a change in the child's routines, either went for a holiday, had a small illness, for some reason your diet was not good and you become, you pass a hard stool, which is often painful. But this memory stays with the child and whenever this child gets a similar sensation to pass stool, the, the, the child gets a bit scared, may not pass stool, uh, may not be willing to pass stool, postpones it. And obviously the longer you don't pass stool, the body will absorb the water from the stool and make it hard. And when the child subsequently passes the stool, it is more hard and more painful. So this cycle goes on and we call it withholding of stool. So this one is very difficult because it's not, not the problem of the intestine. The child is voluntarily holding on to the stool and hence the stool becomes hard. And obviously a big and hard stool when it comes out causes a lot of pain and this is not going to get better without modifying the child's behavior. So if we have reached this stage where the, the stools are hard and the child is scared, we have to act in two ways. One is we have to make the stool soft. At the same time, we have to make the child feel comfortable about the thought of passing stools. So to make it soft, at this stage, I don't recommend any kind of diet or anything. By this time, the stool is hard. No amount of fiber you give through the mouth, no amount of water you give is going to make the stool soft. You do require some kind of stool softness. So common stool softness can be given. This, the function of this is to hold on to the moisture in the stool so that the body cannot take the stool out. And even if the child is scared and eventually passes the stool, it is softer. So this gives the child a bit of confidence. And the next time the confidence improves and with time after consistently passing a soft stool, the child eventually is more relaxed and is happy to think about passing stool in a relaxed manner. Can I just so that ask is why you about uh, softness? I mean, uh, in the early stages, do you prefer something like uh, lactulose and then Movicol or uh, I mean something which is a stool softener? Yes. So Obviously, if we have reached this stage that it is already hard and child is withholding, I would just use softeners like lactulose or polyethylene glycol. Uh, common trade name is Movicol. These are the two things I recommend. They're absolutely safe. They just sit in the stool and just go out into the toilet. They don't even touch the blood. So don't worry. There's no real concern about side effects either. But the most, the key to it is don't just use it for a few days and then stop it. Because what you don't want is your child is still a 
not so mature child is only between one or one to four year or five years of age they more respond to their body's cues and clues so if there is pain or if there's a thought of pain they are going to regulate it by not trying to pass stool so if one day there is pain and another day there is no pain that doesn't help it should be pain free for a long long time only then they will be comfortable in passing stool so for the same reason don't stop the treatment very uh, abruptly even if you are stopping it should be a very slow tapering and stopping so you half the dose then quarter the dose and slowly any signs that the child is not comfortable you can go back on to the previous dose so this is very key and it is at this stage the diet and things help rather than in the stage at the beginning at this stage yes maintain a healthy eating habits health a good fluid intake a healthy uh, um, timing about going to the toilet sitting for the for the right amount of time and these are the uh, things that help but in the initial stages it is about giving some kind of softness to, to decrease the anxiety of the child and modify the child's uh, attitude towards passing stools and uh, when would you consider investigations or i mean thyroid is a common question that the parents have so at what stage would you think of testing yeah so statistics again we go back to statistics in most uh, times when we uh, want to look at causes so statistically most of the uh, uh, constipation do not have any serious underlying cause and do not need any investigation it's the diagnosis is made purely on history but of course as with most conditions you would look for the red flags if it's a child who is not growing well if the child already having allergies if it's a child uh, uh, having um some other problems uh, then only we will try to in investigate but in a typical child who is developing normally there is no neurological problem growing well really there is no need for investigation and your question about thyroid so this is also by the time the thyroid activity is very low that it affects the bowel it is quite significant hypothyroidism and you will have other effects of thyroid before you get the bowel so you rarely need such test you actually don't need any test in most children if you have done a good history and examination thank you and i mean uh, slightly off the topic but because we won't be doing a video separately on inflammatory bowel disease i mean i know crohn's disease ulcerative colitis they happen in a older age group but i mean a typical presentations are there so what would be your suggestion to parents on when they should consult a gastroenterologist at what situation so um, very often uh, what you mentioned inflammatory bowel diseases are serious disorders and they do come with a set of significant symptoms also so that means there will be a significant abdominal pain there may be weight loss they may feel tired they may have altered bowel habits so these are very simple questions uh, which we can uh, screen when we ask the parents and if any of these things are there very simple baseline investigations can be done to uh, to uh, like strengthen our suspicion and we don't need to really advanced testing to strength uh, to have suspicion once it is suspected then then the child needs to be referred to the pediatric gastroenterologist for further evaluation but key to all these things is to have a very good history and looking for those red flag signs typically weight loss not eating well tired child uh, altered bowel habits like diarrhea or bleeding per rectum these are the main few things so actually, as you can see this this list is very small and and uh, very easy to detect you don't need any advanced testing to detect these things thank you and uh, just to summarize what we discussed about constipation so majority firstly in a breastfeeding baby the stool pattern is variable so in the newborn period or in the first 6 to 8 weeks don't be worried about the frequency of stools constipation is defined more by consistency rather than frequency and uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to the toddlers the uh, hard stools coming as a situation as dr ajmal rightly said it leads to pain and then the vicious cycle of uh, holding the stools getting the stools more hard and the impaction starts so once the stool is impacted your dietary changes are not going to change it you have to treat it with stool softeners or uh, other treatments i mean uh, just to ask you here is there any role for enemas 
again, this is another thing I am quite against it is, uh, so if, uh, they all have its role, but if you imagine a child who is already petrified to go to the toilet, he is not really happy with that part of his, his body and you are pulling his legs apart and inserting something into the anus, it's not going to go well. And this is only going to increase the, the fear and prolong the whole process. But in a selected cases, it can help, but not as a, as a routine. The severe impaction where the softeners alone do not help. Would you put it that way? Exactly. So if the oral medicines don't work and then uh, you have no choice, that's when uh, we can consider. But again, I would give a very good thought before I do it. If you do it routinely, uh, you are just going to prolong the whole process. And again, not much role of investigations, isn't it? Like X-ray to show the impacted stool or ultrasound. Yeah, no. There's no much ro role for any of these things because the interpretation of these things are very unreliable. And uh, so, I mean, this is the key that uh, stool softening is not a temporary measure. It should be long term enough for the child uh, to forget that. And once the stool softening has helped, that's when your dietary changes, your dietary fiber, increased water intake helps. Also keep in mind that juices are not necessarily good for the developing teeth at this age. So even though juices may add a little more sugar to your stool. And again, we should remember that with the softener like Dufalac or Lactalose where you have to look after the teeth of the child at this stage. If you are using it, give it before brushing so that it doesn't stain. So uh, do you have any final comments, uh, Dr. Ajmal? Um, no, I think that's it basically. Uh, uh, don't over investigate, take a good history, look for red flag signs. This will be my key messages. Thank you. It was a very helpful session and uh, thank you again for coming over to be with us. And uh, uh, parents and uh, listeners, if you have any questions, please mention in the comment section. Uh, I would request you to share this and to subscribe as well if you have not already done. Uh, hope it helps. Thank you.